Welcome to the City of Greenville's 29th Annual Martin Luther King Memorial Prayer Breakfast. I'm going to read a poem that I wrote in 2007. And the title of it is, His Legacy Lives On. A man so brave, so honest and true. A man, when in trouble, knew just what to do. He marched in states so close to home. Alabama, South Carolina, and Georgia, he roamed. He shouted and protested about things that were not right, and all the things he got was a jail stay overnight. The harder the times, the stronger the man, who set the course and had a plan. He carried the load for you and for me, never asking why. I have a dream, my brothers and sisters, a dream to set us free. He went to the mountaintop and to the valley low. Given his speeches to mankind, his seed he desperately sowed. He was assassinated in 1968. Now he's with God, standing at the pearly gates. Coretta's there right by his side. She fought a good fight, keeping his dream alive. Who is this man, so brave and so true? Some call him Martin, but I call him Dr. King. I have a dream, I have a dream. He said so many times before. And I want to thank the city of Greenville for today you opened that door. Good morning and welcome. Uh, welcome to the 29th annual uh, prayer breakfast honoring Dr. Martin Luther King. I think uh, one of the things that uh, goes unsaid in this is at the end of that discussion about, you know, I have a dream and all and on and that fight and that huge civil rights movement is um, valuing diversity. And I think at the end of the day, one of the, the things that we've got to come to grips with in the community, in our country, and around the world is how do you value somebody that's different than you? Um, it's changed from that fight. It's gone to a place that we have to now start uh, understanding tolerance. And after we've seen what happened in Arizona, I think it's just a good opportunity for all of us to take an opportunity to say, what can we do to uh, understand um, um, what those differences are? Um, I dare say that we do it pretty good here in the city of Greenville. Um, and I'm welcoming our guest here. This is more of a family event. It started 29 years ago. And if you think about it, it started with a small crew over in Public Works who was doing something that nobody else around the city of Greenville was doing. It grew into a division type of breakfast. Then it grew to a department type breakfast. Grassroots effort. Guy over in Public Works, Mr. Beck, doing what he thought was right. After it grew to a department, then they started inviting other departments to come over and take part. Celebration. And that's where you start to see this thing we call diversity in action. And that's the true dream. If you go to the bottom of all of that, it is how do you put it in action? And it grew from that to a city of Greenville event where it was just employees. And I dare say now that it's a community event. And we were doing it long before there was national recognition about it. This community is special. Um, you make this community special being city employees. And what diversity in action is, is this in its simplest form. Uh, after we had our 12 inches of snow, um, we had operations <clears throat> on point, police, fire, public works, all these folks working around the clock to get our community back to uh, something that we deem normal. And I think we all are very uh, impressed and proud by that. But one quick story about diversity, and this is how you know it's working. Late last night, someone calls me, it's 7.30, quarter to 8, in an underserved neighborhood. And they say, you know, John, mm -hmm. we, don't, you know, we don't think the, the plows are going around. Prior to that call, our public works director and our assistant public works director called me early yesterday and said, we are going to get this right. We're going to be in those, after we finish these primary roads, we're going to be in those neighborhoods because we want them to know your rate of return on your investment in us, we serve all. And they have been working in those neighborhoods to make sure. So late last night when I got the phone call, it's 8 o'clock, and these guys have been working around the clock. I called the public works director and called the assistant public works director. Without a hesitation, they said, give me the phone number. I will call this person and make sure we get it right. So 9 o'clock, I get an email back from Brian Watson saying, I've talked to 
uh, uh, her. I explained that we couldn't get that one road because of the ice and the danger to our employees. But I tell you what, 8 o'clock this morning, I welcome you to I'll come by, pick you up, ride you around your neighborhood, and you show me where we didn't do such a good job because we want to get it right. At the end of that dream, at the end of everything, it's about diversity. It's about doing That was unprompted. So I dare say in this community of ours, we don't get it right all the time, but we're better than we were last year, and we'll be better than we are today next year. So congratulations to our public works, our fire department, all the folks who worked around the clock to get our community back. Uh, I dare say it's one of the best communities, uh, not just in this state, uh, in the country. It's why Green was proud. Uh, I welcome you to our 29th uh, MLK breakfast. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose bright stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the red parts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocky glare the bones bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangle and I yet wave for the land of the free. most awesome and loving God who did create mankind simply because of your love. We come before you on this day seeking your guidance and your counsel. When you created us, Lord, you made us all in your image and likeness, children of the same Heavenly Father. We know that you look upon us all as being equal in your eyes. In your eyes, we are the same, brothers and sisters in soul and heart. But sometimes, somehow, we forget the common father that we all have. And we may forget that the physical differences we display have nothing to do with the spiritual dimension we all share. In our selfishness and egotism, we may forget our shared humanity. And to help us get back on track, Lord, you sometimes send to us your messengers, like this, your servant, Martin Luther King, to remind us to look back to you so that we can again appreciate our common heritage, to remind us that you, as our creator, do not separate your children but rather, you see us all as your creation. What parent can look upon his offspring with differing amounts of love? What heavenly creator can hold back on granting all his children equal portions of his blessings? We know, O oh God, that you do not hold back. Rather, 
you bestow graciously, bountifully, without discrimination, your blessings upon all of us, your children. We ask you to open our minds and our hearts, gracious Lord, as we come together to begin today to honor your messenger servant, Martin. Allow us to perceive as he perceived, not divisiveness, but unity, not despair, but hope, not limitations, but soaring dreams, not casting blame at each other, but opportunities to work with each other. In this universe you created, O oh Lord, there is no greater power than love. You are love. We, as your children, created in your holy image and likeness, have inherited that awesome power. Please, precious Lord, help us to recognize and to harness this gift you offer to us. Let it inspire us and move us to share it with all our brothers and sisters. Make us worthy to claim being your children, not by what we say with our mouths, but by our actions offered in your name. We ask in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I have the proclamation to officially kick off this day in the city of Greenville, which I shall read. Uh, whereas Greenville and many other cities have made great strides in racial equality, and whereas the movement was led by outstanding Americans like Dr. Martin Luther King, who advocated nonviolent social change, and whereas the character of America today owes much to the pioneering efforts of Dr. King, who dedicated his life to preserving the human rights of all people, and whereas the citizens of Greenville come together on Dr. King's birthday to recognize the progress of the past and to plan for even greater future. Now, therefore, I, Knox White, Mayor of the City of Greenville, and the whole City Council do hereby proclaim Monday, January 17th, is Dr. Martin Luther King Day in the City of Greenville. Thank you. Let us pray. For the food we are about to eat, we are thankful to you, God for the many workers, your sons and daughters, who help make this day possible, for the many blessings we have in our city employees' physical health that make our bodies a complement to your name, including the health of our hearts and our hands, and for our health of minds, that we may continue to stretch our limits of understanding, that we may grow to accept change even when it is difficult. We, we pray in this day of dreams that we may all dream big and live larger. We pray to you, God, and thank you for this blessed weekend of understanding, patience, and wisdom. Thank you for this food. In this we ask of you, amen. He chose to stand and fight Whatever the circumstance He was for unity He was a shining light
Curtis Johnson, a native of Greenville, South Carolina, is a graduate of J.L. Mann High School, served in the uh, United States Air Force, and he preached his initial sermon August 1990, became the senior pastor of Valley Brook Outreach Baptist Church in Pelza in 1993. He received his Masters of Divinity from Gardner-Webb University. Reverend Johnson is also currently the South Carolina Overseer for Churches and Pastors for the International Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. In a continued effort to build, Pastor Johnson is the founder of the MLK Dream Weekend, a community-wide celebration of events for the city of Greenville, representing Dr. Martin Luther King's theme of diversity and empowerment. He and his wife of 21 years, Charla Johnson, have built together lives and great, done many great things to build the kingdom of God. They have two sons, Isaiah and Joshua. He is especially honored to have the privilege of being invited personally by Coretta Scott King and the King family to participate in the 2004 annual King Holiday Memorial Celebration at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. And the city of Greenville this morning is very proud to have representing and the main speaker for our particular annual program for our 29th annual program for the MLK Weekend. A great visionary and founder of the MLK Dream Weekend here in the city of Greenville, Pastor Curtis L. Johnson. Please give him support. Thank you. Some years ago, I was very privileged to hear a speech from a gentleman by the name of Reverend Billy Kyles. Reverend Kyles was actually a friend and a partner of Dr. King. And he was actually the one that invited Dr. King to Memphis in 1968 to help address the needs of the sanitation workers in that city back then. And I heard him give a speech that has so impacted my, my mind, my spirit, and my heart for many, many years that I just felt like I needed to revisit some of what I heard and kind of Johnsonize it and put my own twist on it. But um, in the conversation he had with a reporter, and he had been invited to be the guest speaker at a key, at a King Holiday event. Reverend Kyle told the same story to this reporter that I heard him share many years ago. Reverend Kyle tells a story about the childhood of the great author, Robert Louis Stevenson. If you know anything about this author, you will know that Stevenson had never enjoyed good health in all of his life. He was sickly and feeble as a child, but even with his feebleness, he always had a very crisp and clear, creative, intellectual mind. One evening, as Robert Louis Stevenson was staring outside his window, his nurse observed him, and what Stevenson was doing was he was watching a lamp lighter. And what this lamp lighter was doing was Stevenson watched him as he carried his ladder to a lamp post, posted it on the lamp post, climbed up the ladder, climbed to the top of the post, and changed the light, turning the light on, climbed back down the ladder, and moved on to the next post. He would climb up the ladder, up against the darkness of the night. He would change the light, come back down, and move the ladder to the next post. So the nurse asked him, little boy, what are you doing? And with his creative, sharp mind, he said, I'm watching that man knock holes in the darkness. That's what we're going to talk about for a few moments. Knocking holes in the darkness. Reverend Kyle said to this reporter that what he wanted to say about Dr. King at this speech on this next day 
was that when he saw Dr. King, he saw a man committed to knocking holes in the darkness. Wherever there was a place that was overwhelmed by darkness, wherever it was, whether it was the darkness of racism or the darkness of injustice or the darkness of poverty, the darkness of violence, whether that place was in Memphis or Montgomery or Georgia or South Carolina or Washington, D.C., what Dr. King would do is he would take his ladder there. He would go and stop at that place. He would lean his ladder against the lampposts of that city. He would climb the ladder, no matter how difficult it was, no matter how shaky the ladder was. And he would light the lamp, and he would stay there at the lamp until he was sure that the light could keep on shining when he was done. When he was done. Then he would come back down the ladder, receive another call, and move his ladder to the next place. In his short 39 years on earth, Dr. King left a legacy that has inspired nations, governments, and even ideologies of all races, generations, and cultures since his departure. Essentially, if you will, his legacy can be described in, Robert, in Reverend Kyle's and Robert Louis Stevenson's assessment. The nurse asked Robert, little boy, what are you doing? Reverend Kyles and Robert Louis Stevenson can say they watched those men knocking holes in the darkness. Within the nature of their assessment, there could also be some important assumptions that can be made about the rest of us as well. It demonstrates for us that whether we work as hired servants like a lamp lighter, or maybe we find ourselves perpetually physically weak and feeble like Robert Louis Stevenson, or whether we're gifted in oratory skills or inspirational leadership like Dr. King was, all of us have within us a deep-seated light that reflects the glories, the potential, and the power of the God who created us. We are each designed with a unique purpose. Each of us has passions that should enable us to confront the darknesses wherever we are. And whatever we see and we, in whatever form it takes shape, we have the responsibility. It is expected of each of us that we have to fulfill our roles as lamp lighters. What are we doing? Knocking holes in darkness. With the work that you do, with the work that I do, with the passions that motivate each of us to do what we do, we should each see ourselves as problem solvers. We should see ourselves as someone who's here to correct something that's wrong, to fix what's broken, to address an issue. We are here to serve as the voices for those who can't speak for themselves. Right here in the city of Greenville, South Carolina, you, sir, or you, madam, should see yourself as a lamp lighter. You should see yourself in the spirit of Dr. King every day, when you sit at your desk or when you go out into the streets or when you stand in your spot, whenever you serve the needs of this city, whatever you are doing, you should lean your ladder up against your own assigned lamppost. With patience and with diligence, you ought to climb your ladder. As difficult as it may be, as challenging as it may be, climb your ladder and light the lamp at the top. Let your light so shine so that men would see them from all over, wherever you are. You are a city set up on a hill, and you cannot be hid. City of Greenville, you have shown at times with brilliance that has been respected across this nation and across this world. When Greenville shines, you are knocking holes in the darkness of pain. When you shine, you're knocking holes in the darkness of confusion. You're knocking holes in the darkness of mediocrity, of ignorance, of poverty, of unfairness, of discrimination. You're shining your light of peace. You're shining a light of unity. You're shining your light of knowledge. You're shining the light of progress. You're shining the light of economic opportunity for everybody in Greenville. My task today is challenging, but it's rewarding. I'm simply here to remind you that you're doing more than a job. You're doing more than getting a paycheck. You're more than a city employee. You are uniquely gifted with a light. You're uniquely gifted with a divine opportunity and you are expected to knock holes in somebody's darkness. In the immortal words of Dr. King, he said, when you discover what you will be in your life, 
set out to do it as if God Almighty called you at this particular moment in history. Don't just set out to do a good job, set out to do a job that's so good that the living, the dead, or the unborn could not do it any better. He said, if it falls your lot to be a street sweeper, then sweep streets like Michelangelo painted pictures. Sweet streets like Beethoven composed music. Sweet streets like Leontine Price sings before the Metropolitan Opera. Sweet streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Sweet streets so that all the hosts of heaven and earth will have to pause and say, here lived a great street sweeper who swept his job well. If you can't be a pine at the top of the hill, be a shrub in the valley. Be the best little shrub on the side of the hill. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be a sun, be a star. But for anything, if, if it isn't by size that you win or you fail, be, be the best of whatever you are. Be the best. Little boy, what are you doing? I'm watching that man knock holes in the darkness. Thank you. Still and, and everyone been talking about how this thing just kind of picked up and how it got started from way back 29 years ago and just how you can just kind of see it is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and I just come together I was like man it's just a transfiguration like thing happening we're beginning to see it grow our uh, 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 diversity uh, we're crossing over racial barriers the city of Greenville is doing this and I was just reminded of something out of the Bible that took place over in the book of Matthew where Jesus took with him James and, uh, and Peter and James and they went up to this mountain and, and, and they say when they got up to this mountain Jesus, it was a transfiguration that basically took place and, 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 and Moses was there and Jesus was talking with Moses and Elijah and all and, and Peter got so excited about what he saw. He just got so excited about what he saw that he looked at Jesus and said, Master, it is good to be here. And that's what I want to say about the city of Greenville right now. I, I, I'm watching and I see the transfiguration that's taking place. And I see how we're beginning to cross over racial barriers. And we're doing things and we're recognizing things. And, and people are just working together. And people are loving on each other. And we're not scared to shake each other's hand. And we're not scared to just hang out with each other every now and again. And I come as a representative of the city of Greenville. And I can say it is good to be here. All right, all right. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. There's a lot going on all over the place. There's a lot going on, but right here, it's just good to be here. And so that's my statement today. It's good to be here. Y'all stand. We're going to do the benediction. <laughs> Gracious, kindly, God, we just thank you right now for all your many blessings, oh God, that you have bestowed upon us. 
We thank you, O oh God, for this gathering. You allowed us to come together today, O oh Father God, to, to honor one of our very own, Dr. Martin Luther King, and, and all others that had hand in this, O oh Lord God. We just thank you now. We thank you, O oh Father God, for these, these people that are sitting at the head table, the mayor, the, 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 the city manager, and, and all. We just thank you for all these people, O oh Heavenly Father, for just allowing us to come together to celebrate and recognize this particular day. We thank you, O oh God, for we know that without you, none of this would be possible. And so we thank you right now. We ask, oh God, that you bless us as we leave this place. Keep us. Keep us safe while we're out there working. Keep every worker safe, the ones outside, the ones in the buildings. Keep us safe. Bless us, oh Lord God, right now. We thank you, Lord God. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of the glory with exceeding joy, the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore, and the people of God said amen.